Hi, family of God. This is Believers Global TV. On this channel, we create Christian content that will help you in your spiritual growth, ranging from powerful word of God, powerful prayer session, night videos, and many more. On this channel, all the content that we create here are purely Christian content. And first, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it is what you hear that builds you up. It is what you hear that you engage that truly bring results into your life. So I encourage you as you're about to listen to this message, open up your heart and be ready to receive from God through his servant. So I encourage you to stay tuned to the end and put your comment in the comment section, like this video and share with others also. Thank you. God bless you. Already on the subject of open doors and I hope that uh, as we contemplate on a few thoughts this morning, I request that you lend me your attention. Hallelujah. Accessing greater doors. I believe that the concept of being greater or having greater portions of anything is the destiny of every believer in Christ. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that believers should increase, believers should progress, believers should advance. In Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more profits them. Those who find them. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The mysteries of the kingdom in Job chapter 38 and verse 33 Job 38 and verse 33 very very powerful scripture it says knowest thou the ordinances 38 33 3, 3. Job 38 and verse 33 it says knowest thou the ordinances of heaven canst thou establish the dominion in the earth thereof can you give us NIV NIV or any other modern version, NIV is preferable. It says, do you know the laws of the universe? Can you set up God's dominion using those laws over the earth? So if things do not just happen, results do not just happen, they are at the mercy of the mysteries that we have access to. May God open our eyes in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number two, the second way that doors open in this kingdom is by a very deep mystery that the Bible calls knocking. Doors open in this kingdom by knocking. I wish I had the time to deal with the subject of knocking, but knocking here talks about obtaining help from men through mercy and favor. When you knock a door, it means you do not have the keys to open it, but you believe that at the other side of the door is a man who has the power to open it for you. So knocking brings you to a point where you must understand the ministry of men. Are we together? The Bible says the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the children of men. You may have heard me say, if God says yes and a man says no, your yes will remain in the realm of the spirit. It takes both the spirit and the bride to say come, not the spirit alone. This is the world of men. And if God does not grant you access to the hearts of men, you will live a defeated life, even though a believer. Say amen, please. You must know how to knock. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 7 and 8, please give it to us, Matthew 7, it says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock, it says, and it shall be opened. You are not the one who will open it, but it shall be opened unto you. Then it says for everyone. Now, I love this scripture. There are blessings in the Bible that are limited to a few people. For instance, the Bible will say, He gave unto some. But when it has to do with the possibilities that come from knocking, it says for everyone, everyone, for everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And then it says to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 
So when we knock, the Bible tells us that doors are open. In fact, in Revelation, I believe, chapter 3 and verse 20, the Bible even tells us that Jesus himself stands at the door. Your heart is, is guarded by a door, and the Bible says he knocks, even though he's creator, because he's giving you the right of free will. He would not budge into your heart. You would have to stand and knock. And he says, if any man hear my voice, and opens that door, I will come in. I can, you can, as powerful as he is, he's at the mercy of your agreeing to open the door. Remember, Jesus, in, in Luke's synoptic account, I believe, of um, the subject of asking, he gave a very interesting story, and he said how that there was a gentleman who came and knocked on the door of his friend and said friend please give me three loaves another friend has come and you know i have i'm insufficient and the friend said no please leave it's already late i'm with my children we're already sleeping and the bible says he kept knocking that even though he will not arise and help him because of friendship but because of importunity persistence he kept knocking the bible says he woke up and did not just give him three loaves he gave him as many as he desired you must master the art of knocking hallelujah and when it has to do with the ministry of knocking you must understand relationships relationships are powerful one relationship can close a door that may take you your lifetime struggling to open are we together number three the third way that the bible teaches that we open doors is through the supernatural the, the engaging supernatural power supernatural power and the use of force can open doors Remember what happened to you when you lost your key and you ran out of patience? The door still opened. How did it open? You got a hammer. Am I right on that? And the aesthetics and the beauty of the door did not matter at that point. The passion to come in was greater than the passion to look at a beautiful building. Sometimes you need to look beyond. You need to be tired of standing and staying and you must be willing to push through even through the supernatural power of the spirit in Acts chapter 16 Acts chapter 16 we'll begin our reading from verse 25 Acts chapter 16 this is a very deep mystery the Bible says Paul and Silas remember when they delivered the young damsel from the spirit of divination and the people who were making money out of the lady ran out of the market and they were angry and you know they sent them to jail that's how they got there the bible says at midnight paul and silas prayed and they sang praises unto god and the prisoners heard them 26 then the bible says next verse please suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken no key was used no knocking was used but the door still opened and the bible says it so happened that all doors open not some so there is a mystery that can open all doors without the key and without knocking this is god himself when the creator decides to step in over a man's life he can rewrite the narrative you may not be holding a key you may not even have access to anyone to help you but in the name of jesus i'm praying over someone because the situation in your life right now you may honestly not have a key to open the door are we together you may not have a relationship remember in john was it john 5 the bible talks about the man at the pool of bethesda who had been there for 38 years and then the bible says when jesus came to ask him what should i do for you here was his issue i have no man to help me not that I cannot move, but the man to provide a leverage. I've been in Abuja, but I have no man to help me. I am gifted, but there's no one. I am Joseph with the power to interpret Pharaoh's dream. But the wine presser who would speak for me and connect me to Pharaoh is not there. And Jesus said, let me rewrite the rules. Arise. You don't need to enter the water again. When the God of heaven comes by the agency of supernatural power, 
doors can open. When he comes, he does not knock from door to door. All doors, all doors open. Are you getting blessed? This is true. So do not be surprised when all the doors in your life open after this service. No. You would be grateful enough if, the, if it opens one door per month. But not when His Majesty steps in. When He steps in, all doors open. He does not beg for keys. He does not knock. He rattles the foundation of that problem and causes all doors to open. Are we still together? So these are the three biblical ways that doors open according to Scripture. A quick recap. Number one, the use or the application of the right keys number two by knocking obtaining favor and help through the ministry of men number three supernatural power hallelujah now let's talk about greater doors i think we've been able to establish enough about open doors the dynamics of greater doors since we now know how doors open it's important for us to know that life is in phases. Please listen carefully. Let me have your attention. Life is in phases. And just because a door has opened. You see doors. Midwife realms and levels. Between your kitchen and your living room. Is a door. Am I right on that? And just because you've passed through the main door. Does not mean that's the only door you will pass. Doors midwife realms. Doors, when you see a door, it tells you you have come to the end of a season and you are about to step into another one. Because doors stand as an interface between seasons. Morning and afternoon have a door that stands between them. Afternoon and evening has a door. Is that true? So, every time you make progress and you later meet a door, you should not cry. It's a signal to you that that current season has come to an end and that you are ready to step into a new one. If you walk and you don't find a door, you are still at the same realm. You know that you are wrapping up that realm by the presence of a door. Is someone learning? Doors midwife realms. Doors midwife seasons. Remember, I told you that doors can also be obstacles. So when you have a landslide as you journey through life is only the victory that brought you into that realm you are still celebrating sooner or later a door will come as a signal that you have exhausted this realm it says you have encompassed this mountain long enough to turn you northwards are we still together greater doors i will give us for this service three keys that will grant us access to greater doors the dynamics of opening doors remain the same but these are additions that will help us to access greater doors are we ready greater doors will require greater light number one higher dimensions of spiritual truth hallelujah greater light greater light greater light. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 16 Genesis 1 and verse 16. Please give it to us. The Bible says God made two great lights. Remember he made lights already. Are we together? He made lights already. But the Bible says when we come to verse 16 that he made two great lights. The greater to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. Then it says he made the stars also. So there were different kinds of lights and allocated to all those lights were different portions of dominion. Are we together now? So the higher your level of spiritual illumination, the higher the levels of the doors that you can access. This is true. When you get into diplomatic centers or highly secured uh, places, the dynamics for accessing the doors change as you advance. Is that true? Yes. In many organizations, in fact, as you rise up the lift, maybe get into the boardroom or the office where the executives are, the, the, the dynamics for opening the doors are not, no longer the same. Hallelujah. 
in many developed nations they have what they call nuclear codes is that true nuclear codes and no one person has the entire code not even the president the codes are distributed between the secretary of state i think i'm right on that the president has a portion another until they come together no one person has it all because that will be putting a nation at the risk of one man's emotions hallelujah that is because it is a sensitive they are releasing something that can wipe out nations in a moment so the higher you rise in life and destiny you will need access to greater light listen to me our possibilities in the kingdom don't just happen because of the keys we have it also happens because of the extent of light and knowledge the bible says arise shine isaiah 60 and verse 1 for your light is come it says and the glory of the lord is risen upon thee verse 2 says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness it says the people but the lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you i love verse 3 please look at it carefully and let's read in concert ready one to read gentiles shall come please stop gentiles shall come to if you have light the only audience you can command are the gentiles but if it's the presence of the kings that you want the bible says the kings will not come just to light they will come to the brightness of your rising so if you find out that you've been dealing with gentiles alone or ordinary people for want of word do not blame them it is what you have that is attracting them there is a kind of illumination that calls the attention of kings the bible tells us that when solomon became king all the other neighboring kings kept coming to him because of you know his dominion but there was a woman from ethiopia who refused to come she sat back and kept watching but as his glory continued to excel it compelled that woman called the queen of sheba and she got up and she came by herself and bible history would tell us that for six months she was around the temple of solomon when she saw the dexterity of his temple he said that there were two lions by every step can you imagine that even the spoons of the palace were overlaid with pure gold even the gold of offering the bible says when she saw every Everything she had no breath in high day solomon for you kings only come to the brightness of your rising whether as a businessman as a man of god you do not attract the attention of kings giving them what they can have alternative for you have to be exceptional and distinguished enough to call the attention of kings is someone hearing this morning please shout a loud amen Gentiles will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. The reason why the Magi came to Jesus was that the light that attracted them was so bright it called for the attention. If it was an ordinary star, they would not mind. When they saw it as astrologers, they knew that this signified something and they began to follow the direction of that star and it brought them right in front of the manger. Do you have a star that leads men to you? Is it bright enough to command kings? They did not come empty-handed, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says they came paying homage, bringing gifts of gold, of frankincense, and of man. Not minding the age of the baby. Once that light is there, they will come. Every other factor becomes secondary when there is greater light. Are we together? Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path and lead us along? eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter greater light number two what is the second biblical key 
that controls greater doors. Are you ready? It's called faithfulness. Please write it down. Faithfulness is the second kingdom mystery that grants men access to greater light. What is faithfulness? The quality of loyalty, trustworthiness. I wrote down here that faithfulness is a firm adherence to promises or a firm observance to duty. Faithfulness, loyalty, trustworthiness, a firm adherence to promises and a firm observance to duty. Matthew chapter 25 is a very interesting parable. Please give us from verse 21. We call it the parable of the talent. Now Jesus used parables in his earth walk to illustrate the mysteries of the kingdom. And this was one of those parables. The Bible says the preceding verses would tell us that he gave unto one five talents, uh, two talents, and one and all the verses before, 5 to 1, and they were given the liberty to do whatever they wanted to do with it. But now, the owner of the talents came and demanded accountability from them, 21. This is to the five now. The one who had five went and made five more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Please say a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Say many things. So midwifing few things and many things is faithfulness. Few things, many things. Mediocre doors for want of word, greater and more excellent doors, faithfulness. Many people desire greater doors in their lives but they do not know that your faithfulness is the examination that you write that qualifies you to the next season. In fact, the Bible puts it this way. Still on that scripture, we're reading to 20, 23. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. It's an enter thou access into the joy of the Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord... Thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His comment, verse 23. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Now, did you notice that the size of what they were giving did not affect the commendation? It was their faithfulness. The same thing he said to one that had five talents was the same thing he said to one that had two talents. Let's finish up that scripture. He says, Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Thou hast been faithful with this level of anointing. I will promote you and grant you access to deeper levels of grace in the spirit. Thou hast been faithful over this for want of word, elementary levels of spiritual revelation, I will grant you access to great things. Thou hast been faithful with 200,000 naira. You used it with diligence, with discipline and a sense of accountability. The way you will use 2 million is demonstrated in how you use the 200,000. There are many people who have this imaginary imagination that uh, this, this, this blind imagination, if I use that, that expression, that supernaturally anointing or money will just come in in greater proportions and without any track record of learning and managing things at an elementary level, they would step into greatness. It does not happen in this kingdom. In this kingdom, things come because of growth. Luke 2.52. In fact, things stay because they came by growth. Anything that did not come by growth does not stand a chance of longevity. And Jesus increased, the Bible says, in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. The apostles started as disciples and one time he sent them two by two. They returned with a report, yet these were the apostles of the Lamb who would later do mighty things for the kingdom. While you wish for higher and greater doors, 
while you wish for higher and greater levels of the anointing, while you wish for higher and more superior levels of prosperity, more, more, more um, greater opportunities, strategic relationships, you must obtain grace to be faithful where you are. He told Abraham, from where thou art, lift up thy eyes. You are going beyond this point, but respect where you are. From where you are, lift up your eyes. Start being kind to people from where you are. Start being faithful as a worker from where you are. It is a risk to promote unfaithfulness. Are we together? It is a risk. Every time... Luke 16, let's read from verse 10 to 12. I'm just reading the same account, but Luke's synoptic account. It is a risk to promote unfaithfulness. There are many of us, respectfully speaking, who have children who have demonstrated carelessness and unfaithfulness as to the various things we've trusted them with. It is a risk to continue to multiply and grant them access to increase. You are corrupting them from learning a very potent law. People must know the value of growth by faithfulness. Are we together? You grant somebody, a, a young child, a car, and he spoils it in two months, a brand new car. Let him be like Moses. Let him carve the rock that you will write the commandments the next time. God was intelligent. He knew Moses did not understand the power of carving out a rock and writing Ten Commandments in anger, justifiable anger. Crushed everything to powder and gave the people to drink it. And when he met God, you thought God would just say, okay, that's all right, I'll do it again. He said, Moses, you are going to chisel that rock. I will do the writing, but you will chisel the rock by yourself. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. Are we together? Luke 16 from verse 10, please, to 12. He that is faithful in that which is least, never said will be, is already faithful in much. Look at God's marking script. He that is faithful in a little cell fellowship with three people, he said he's already faithful as a branch pastor somewhere. Not will be. Already. And he that is unjust in least, I stole only ten naira. That's just because it was ten naira that was there. It doesn't mean that you, it was only 10 naira you would carry. The potential for everything was there. You only made use of what was available. He that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Reading to 12. 11 now. If therefore ye have not been faithful with the unrighteous mammon, who shall commit to your trust? true riches. Look at the progression of what God gives men. He calls money, material things, unrighteous mammon. Are we together now? That if you are not faithful with physical things, that means when God really blesses you, He does not give you anything physical. No. In God's economy, giving you physical things is just a contribution to your welfare. When God really wants to bless you, what He gives you is called true riches. I call it the capital that buys money. Money itself is a product. The name of the capital that buys it is called true riches. Hallelujah. If this is my phone and I want to buy this phone, I don't, you know, assuming this phone is 10 naira, watch this now. The moment you see me holding 10 naira, I have the capital to buy this phone. Is that true? Now, that 10 naira I'm holding or 10 dollars is also a product. There is a capital that buys it. The name of that capital is called true riches. And there are seven of them. This is not what I'm teaching. One of them is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Another is wisdom. Another is favor. These are the true riches in the kingdom. The currencies that buy money. Every time you do not have anything physical, just know that you are poor in the spirit. It is because the capital to purchase those realities are not there. This is already a word of deliverance for someone. Why is my pocket empty? Your pocket is innocent. Nothing entered inside. The Bible says, Thou anointest my head with oil, but it's my cup that shows what is on my head. So if your cup is empty, don't blame your cup. What is on your cup is a reflection of what is on your head. Solomon became wealthy not because anybody gave him anything physical. 
No. He had an encounter and an understanding heart with wisdom. One of the, the, the seven uh, mysteries that the Bible calls true riches was given to him. Unfortunately, in our world today, we call ourselves blessed because of the physical things we have. You see, in Job chapter 42, when Job had lost everything, now you understand what Job really lost. Job did not just lose his children. Look up, please. Job did not just lose his, his uh, children, his cattle. Something was withdrawn physically from Job. And everything physical started suffering. Because that was how God restored him. God restored Job by replacing back that thing. And immediately Job 42 and verse 10. Let's see what happened. Is someone learning? Let, I'm showing you how God blesses people. Prosperity, what we call prosperity, is simply a physical expression of these spiritual components that are upon you. It is giving evidence to that blessing that is on you. And the Lord turned again the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice. Gave Job twice. How did he measure it? How did he know it was twice? So when God wants people to recover, he gives them twice. Question, twice of what? He gave Job twice as much as he had before. My question is, what did he have before? Don't think he was talking about cattle here. Uh -uh. Next verse. I just want to show you something. I hope I'm not wasting your time. The Bible says, now watch this. As at the time God gave him twice, he was still sitting quietly, poor, physically. But things started changing in the realm of the spirit. The Bible says, Then there came to him all his brethren. Where did they go before? What drove them away from him? That suddenly all of them in concert started remembering to come back to him. That means people running away from you is a sign that something left you in the spirit. Listen, if you understand this, you will stop laboring in vain physically. The realm of the spirit controls this realm. This realm is a helpless slave to the realm of the spirit. And all that has been of his acquaintance before, before, so if you were to ask why all of them like Job, you would say he's a rich man. No, there was something God gave him that attracted people physically to him. That was what Satan was fighting for. He said, take that thing away from him and he will cause you to your face. Now the Bible says, they did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Read verse 12. This is the physical expression of the twice. He said, no, let's go back to 11. I want to finish something that the 11. The Bible says, uh, I wish we can finish up. There's still an expression on 11. The Bible says, and all of them gave him a piece of money. Hallelujah. They brought a piece of money and gave to him. The realm of the spirit controls this physical realm. Because God gave Job twice, his wife had twice. Everything was multiplying in twos because of what came on him. Faithfulness. Hallelujah. So when God wants to bless a man, he may not give you a car, he may not give you this. When, when Abraham was sorting all his children, the Bible records that to the children that he had with his concubines, he gave gifts. Is that true? But to Abraham, to Isaac, he gave him everything he had. Read your Bible, you will see it there. When it came for, you know, to sort out the people, to all the children, I'm sure he gave cattle, he gave gold, he gave other things. But he now called Isaac. He said, come. I'm not going to give you anything physical. But I will give you everything I have. Kneel down. And he spoke over his life. Why for God's sake will Esau cry as an adult? He had value. He had skill. He was a hunter. It was by his hunting skill that he came. So what was it about the blessing that he said, is nothing left? How did they measure these things in the spirit that an adult would be crying because words were not spoken? There is something we do not understand. 
I pray in the name of Jesus that in this morning service, God will open someone's eyes to see that what you really need is not the job. I'm not downplaying it. What you really need is not the business connection. There are elements in the spirit that need to align themselves. If that happens, I guarantee you, except the laws falter, but physically speaking, you will watch life being played like a chess before you. Then you will know that the realm of the spirit truly controls the physical realm. Do you believe this? Apostle, people don't like me. Don't blame them. Blame what is making their spirit reject you. It's true. Because there was something that came upon Daniel that even the lions loved him. When an animal loves a man, it's not normal. I'm not talking of dog, a wild animal, hungry wild animal. And then you enter their den. Not that they met you somewhere where they have trained them. There's no record of those animals being trained. They were hungry and they were angry. So it's not when the economy is harsh, remember the lion's den. When the economy looks hard, hard you remember the lion's den. That when men say there is a casting down on the strength of the mysteries that you have surrounded yourself with, true riches they are called. So the Bible says if you are unfaithful, in fact, let me get back. This is what we are talking about. If you are unfaithful, if you ever clap for yourself because you looked at your bank account and you saw 5 or 10 or 100 or 1 billion, congratulations, but that is a risk. It's one thing for your money to be safe, it's another thing for the bank to be safe. They are two different things. Are we together now? Don't worry, the bank will be saving Jesus. <laughs> Someone just started thinking, of, ah, it's true. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you were an excellent banker in the days of Noah, you are still going down. Anything that was not the ark died. It had nothing to do with your intelligence and every once in a while in human history that phenomenon happens again. It's God rewriting that he is still the owner of the earth. They looked unto him and they were not ashamed. What kind of act is it that will have all the animals in the world coming? And then Noah, his wife, the three sons and their wives and they were secured. The Bible says heaven gave the rain, earth gave the rain. That is not good. The earth is submerged in two thirds of the earth is in water. When it gives up everything and then the waters that are suspended in the cloud, whatever they meet in the middle. Based on that phenomenon, the ark should sink. Because of the sheer what was happening from the heavens. But that was the same thing that was lifting the ark. And it kept him up, uh, it upon Mount Ararat. And it remained there. Listen. Our security in this kingdom is not because of anything mundane. Our confidence is based on the immutability of the mysteries that we transact. There is what you can carry. And as we prepare to wrap up this service, one of the things I believe by the grace of God, even celebrating this, this the wonderful things that God has done in Rogic, if there is any prayer you need to pray for this morning, is among the many things that you receive, God placed something on my head. If you are honest and you assess your physical doors, you must come into um, an honest admission that there are some things that have not yet come on you. Do you believe that? Ah, this man is a great man. What you mean is that He's a great archaeologist who has gone so far to search what must rest on a man's head for some doors to open. And I'm telling you, one of the mysteries is faithfulness. For someone, God is telling you, the door you desire to be opened is there. It's in prophecy that it will be open for you, but you need to be faithful. Being unfaithful now with whatever you have, you have a little business, 
and you so disrespect that business and all you are looking at is oh my classmates my colleagues are now dealing in the billions you will not get there unfaithfulness is like a chain it can tie you and peg you at the same level and cause that the only thing that grows in your life is your age hallelujah praise the name of the lord he that is faithful in little you are a worker in this church serve with all your heart and serve sincerely most ministries that i know the people who later become leaders are people who started not even knowing they will be leaders but they serve with their heart they serve with their all if your job is to clean this stage do it sincerely with all your heart clean the stage as if you were cleaning it for the president of some nation to come because it is from that pulpit that the king of kings will be speaking to the people no eye service no pretense and the god who sees you in secret are we together now run away from people who attain greatness without a track record of service they are dangerous there is something they do not know there is something not captured in their growth equation that will eventually destroy what they now celebrate are we together i believe in speed i pray speed for people but we need to be careful what we call speed because there are many people you will be learning that not every open door is anointed even the prison you enter the prison through an open door a door has to be open for you to enter a prison so just because a door is open verify where you are entering the door can be open and you will enter only to find out that it was the door of the prison and satan can open it gladly prayer or not he will keep the door open and many people have entered into doors believing it was open doors only to find out that it is not open again those are the kinds of doors that will break this morning he says he has broken the gates of bar and cut the gates of uh, um, brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder there are doors that need to be broken because your children must pass if you pass and it's just with a key as wonderful as it is it can be closed but when the door is broken that access has been given it's not only you but even those who come after you are we together now let me give you the third key is someone learning so greater light number one leads to greater doors number two faithfulness number three favor the third mystery that controls access to greater doors is favor Esther chapter 5 Honestly, this is a subject that I understand though. Just listen to me. Believe me. I'm sorry for sounding arrogant, but just trust me. I understand this thing because I search for it. Honestly, I understand the dynamics of favor. Esther chapter 5. Give us from verse 1. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house. Now you understand the story. The background story is that um, it was discovered that Haman was plotting to annihilate the Jews and Esther was going to, you know, seek favor from the king. And ethically in those days, if the king did not invite her to his inner chamber, if she came there on her own, the, the price was death. Are we together now? So she needed favor to access that kind of door. She had access to the palace, but not the inner chamber of the king. Are we together? So let's finish up. The Bible says, over the king's house, and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. Uh huh. Let's read on verse 2. And it came, and it was so, when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight and the king held out to esther the golden scepter that was in his hand so esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter the factor favor then the king said unto her please listen kings don't talk like this this man is certainly under the influence of something are we together now what will thou what will thou queen esther what is thy request 
it shall be given to thee to the half of the kingdom <laughs> if you have a king that talks like this you should be afraid as citizens in that nation that he can give a woman without any counsel half of the kingdom that is how favor can work upon men favor can make men behave as though they were under a spell this is a king kings were not stupid people in those days imagine if esther looked at him and said all right truly give me half of the kingdom let me give my people there were two kings that talked like this in the bible one was ahasuerus the other was herod remember up to half of my kingdom then verse 4 now esther answered if it seem good to the king let the king and her man come this day unto a banquet that i have prepared for him the king said cause her man to make haste that he may do as esther has said so the king and her man came to the banquet that esther had prepared verse 6 it says that the king said to esther at the banquet of the wine what again is your petition can you imagine i told you if it happens only once it's not favor favor must happen again and again and again there's a difference between breakthrough and favor now the king is saying i still feel there is something in your heart that that kind of risk you took coming into the inner chamber cannot just be for a banquet what is it that you want up to half of my kingdom he repeated it again The God of favor has won my battle for me. God of miracles has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man. He's won my battle for me. God of lifting has won my battle for me. God of favor has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man, is what my battle for me. Listen, I'm speaking prophetically to someone in the name of Jesus. This mysterious grace that has rested on ordinary people and granted them access to the hearts of kings. May that grace this day rest upon your life. In the name of Jesus, may that grace this day rest upon your life. That your boss calls you by tomorrow and says, I know you should be resting, but come to the office. And you are afraid because you think something is going to happen. And the boss says, um, can I make you the African representative of this? And he says, sorry, sir. Um, it looks like there are two names that look like my own in this office. And he says, I know what I'm doing. So that you don't think your boss is a bad man, remember this sermon. That some you came to church with your head empty, but as you entered the Lord's house, an unction rested upon you. And I, I say this from the depth of my heart by God, who is Ebenezer, who has helped men and continue to help men. Let this place be say again, let it rest upon you, let it rest upon you, let it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. Every land, dominion, territorial dominion is at the instance of favor. Cities have gates. Territories have gates. Psalm 44 and verse 3. They got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their arms save them. Please give it to us. They got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arms save them. But thy right hand and thy arm the light of thy countenance because thou hadst a favor over them. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye shall go, ye shall not go empty. Favor. Favor is a lift. 
it can take ordinary men, ordinary men to enviable places, opening doors by favor. Listen, when the favor of God rested, watch this, when the favor of God rested upon the man called Peter, and that came through the prayer of the saints, because one of the ways that we access favor is by praying favor-provoking prayers. They were about to kill him. But the Bible says, but prayer was made of the church unto God for him. And when an angel came, the Bible says the bands loosed on their own. And the angel started leading him through doors. And the doors started opening on their own. When it is favor, doors can open on their own. They passed the first door, the Bible says. He came to the second door. Then the Bible says he came to the iron gate that leads to the city. That is the door that leads to influence. The moment that door is open, all you see is the city. Every city has iron doors. Let me tell you the truth. It takes favor for men to love you in this wicked world. People are too concerned about their matters. Whatever will make people forget about the affairs of their lives and turn to you investing their resources, their credibility, their attention must be divine. But when favor is upon you, even a Hazarus will not resist you. Favor works on all men. The Bible says in Esther chapter 2 and verse 15, the B part, it says, And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. No wonder Jesus increased in wisdom. Are you seeing these elements of true riches? In stature. And he also increased in favor. He had the audacity to lose somebody's donkey. And said, if they ask you, tell them. The master had need of it. Without favor, that is jail. Immediately. There are risks you cannot take. Except and unless you verify if there is favor upon your life. Esther, do not stand before Ahasuerus. Until you verify that you are carrying the favor of God. There's no time to begin to tell you stories of God's faithfulness. Credited to his manifest favor. But I can tell you if you speak to Apostle Goodhart and Pastor Bimbo and several leaders here. They will tell you that many strikes in their lives are directly credited to the favor of God. I hope you know there are two dimensions to favor. There is favor with God. There is favor with men. You need both. That's why the Bible teaches both. Favor with men grants you access to the doors here in the cosmos. I don't know how people live without the favor of God. I sincerely do not know how people live without the favor of God. Proverbs 13, 15. Good understanding, the Bible says, procureth favor. It says, but the way of the transgressor is hard. 13, 15. Good understanding giveth favor. But the way of the transgressor is hard. You came here this morning to access greater doors. And I have shown you by the Spirit that these doors do not just open as a matter of will and desire. There are forces in the kingdom that control these doors. The door that stands close before you can be opened, but not under any and every condition. Listen, doors open under certain conditions. Your assignment is to create those conditions by the Spirit, whether it's through the use of right keys, whether it's by knocking, whether it's by supernatural force. But when you now begin to move the realm of greater doors, you need higher levels of light. That means you must make a commitment this year. No missing church, no matter what. My heart is open to learn. Because everything you receive here, they are not just admonishments. They are keys given to you. Keys. That by the end of this year, you will hold these mysteries like a bunch of keys. Like chariots. And you can, you stand before several doors and you just keep swinging them open because of higher light. And then faithfulness. Faithfulness. From where you are, be faithful. Faithfulness. And then of course, number three, favor. Ah, 
this grace must come on you all in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The only way I can describe favor is, is a sad description, but is how a charm works. You know how someone would tie something or swallow something, all this labor that people go through, and then you find people behaving to them in a certain way. I'm not supposed to bless you, but why am I thinking about you? No, people don't just think about you. They are made to think about you. Otherwise, Mordecai would have been rewarded immediately. What was responsible for the forgetfulness of Mordecai? What was responsible for the forgetfulness of Joseph? That the wine press has said, I remember my wrong. That means it's wrong to forget good people. But there is a spirit that is responsible for forgetfulness. Like many people have forgotten you. You have been part of the lives of many people. And right now they cannot even remember you. When it's time to enjoy the spoils. The Bible says the person who watched over the instrument while you went for war. And the person who brought back the good together. They, they, have, they have a stake in the share. Why have you been forgotten? Rejection is a mystery that can be explained in scripture. It says, where thou hast been forsaken so that no man will pass through you, I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Hallelujah. Where your life becomes Beulah and Hephzibah, a delight. He spoke about his son. He said, my son, the smell of my son is like a field that the Lord has blessed. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Have a few minutes to wrap up. And I'm going to allow you to pray and cry to the Lord, maybe for the next one or two minutes. I'd like you to just imagine that you are alone with Jesus in this auditorium. And you are going to cry your heart. Lord, here at this conference, there are doors that I need to access. There are levels. There are realms. The presence of the door that stands before you is a sign that you are, you are wrapping up a season. For some of you, spiritually speaking, there are seasons that are coming to an end. Some of you, financially speaking, there are seasons that are coming to an end. Even as a nation, this election is a door, you see, that leads to another season. We are going to pray wherever you are. I want you to, I don't, I leave you to your maker for the next one or two minutes. Please cry your heart. Let it be from the depth of your heart. No distraction. Cry to the God of heaven. Access to greater doors. Access to greater doors. Access to greater doors. Greater doors in ministry. He said a great door and an effectual is open before me. Someone is praying. Sacrecata peleca to pascadia, crapacata paracata perecatos, cata prateca pelecatos, salica prateca parusia tava lacatosiata. I contend for light, higher levels of spiritual illumination, granting me access to higher realms, higher realms, higher doors, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Cry for the grace to be faithful. Cry for the grace to be faithful. Faithful in ministry. Faithful in business. Faithful as you serve. If someone pray. Cast away the spirit of rebellion. Cast away the spirit of unfaithfulness. Elohim, Ruach Elohim, Ruach Elohim, we pray, Ruach Elohim, Ruach Elohim, Ruach Elohim.
what Elohim feel this land. Ala shalagada barakosiada. Who what Elohim? Who what Elohim? Who what Elohim? Who what Elohim? Who art Elohim? Who art Elohim? Elohim, Madonai. Elohim, Madonai. Elohim, Madonai. Hello, me, Madonna. Hello, me, Madonna. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to cry for the grace and the mantle for favor. Lord, like never before, let it rest upon my life. Mention your children, mention your spouse, mention your business, your ministry by name and declare that this grace of favor, like a garment, let it rest upon you. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Favor can come upon men. They can have access to this true riches called favor. Favor, 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 favor after the order of Esther, favor after the order of Nehemiah the Copiera. Open Listen, the manifestation of the anointing and the gifts of the Spirit are also controlled by doors. You can be a prophet, an apostle, a pastor. But according to Ezekiel 47, the Bible talks about a river that came from the east side of the temple. Please, I want you to listen. And that he measured a thousand cubits. These are exact dimensions. And the river came and it was to my feet. He would have stopped there. The river was already flowing. But he measured a thousand cubits again. And it was to my knees. And he measured a thousand cubits the third time and it was to my loins. The fourth, he said, was an overflowing river. There are realms in the spirit. Some of you are operating in the prophetic, but at the level you are operating in, it will make you look like you are a fake prophet. Because you are not seeing anything and you are not hearing anything. There's need for greater doors to be opened. There are some of you, there are dimensions of kingdom wealth that God wants to trust you. You are already celebrating the little that you have seen. God is talking about feeding nations. Lifting up the name of Jesus. Where you come and 
literally run the yearly budgets of ministries without making noise and say this is my contribution for this year and that is it cry yet saying thus saith the lord my cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad and i shall yet comfort Zion. hallelujah we're talking about being trusted these are not realms of wealth that come by transaction no these are realms of wealth by fraternity with spirits there are different levels of wealth there is wealth that comes by transacting value for predefined prices you call that business there are levels of wealth that comes as appreciation for freely dispensing value but we are talking about these mysterious dimensions of wealth the by this time tomorrow order of wealth The order of wealth that Satan proposed to Jesus. Bow to me and I will give you. That one is not sell a product. You bow and you are given. There are many people who God is trusting in this end time. Not for making noise and jumping up and down and causing a nuisance to society. No. His last treasurer disappointed him. He's still looking for treasurers. Since his last treasurer disappointed him, he's still looking for treasurers. For someone who came to church this morning and I'm speaking to you prophetically, just jump in, I'm a kingdom financier, it's wonderful, but it doesn't work that way. There are realms beyond realms of transaction. You bow to spirit and you are given the keys of nations. So Jesus said, what shall it profit a man? If he gains the whole world and loses his soul, what you transact with is your soul, not your product, your soul. But many of us that God is raising to be kingdom financiers, you have never given one naira to any church. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to give money. I'm only speaking to you that you are not faithful there. No, it's impossible. God cannot be mocked. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people, the amount of offering you were given as a student and when you started working is still what you are giving till now and you are a director. I'm not, we are not, by God's grace, God, we are not talking about manipulating people, but the truth is still the truth. You see that? There are some of you, if you give God less than certain amounts, heaven should query you and say you are not sincere. Look at what you are wearing. Look at what you are doing. No. Because the truth is that where your treasure is, so, that's where your heart will be to. Hallelujah. Is that true? So we are going to pray. Because there are people here, there needs to be an activation of higher levels of graces. A command of superior levels of wisdom. The wisdom you operated as, as an entry staff, now you are an executive director. You operate at that level of wisdom, your business or your company is going down for sure. You will need access to the eyes and the ears of the spirit. Because it is at that realm, the Bible says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. It says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Dangerous things don't appear dangerous. It's later in the journey you will see. You need more than instincts. You will need more than experience. You will need the wisdom of the Spirit. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way it says, Walk ye in it and you will find rest for your soul. I want to stand in faith and partnership with the angels, the apostles over this house. And I, Apostle Opi is here and her dear husband and every servant of God who is here to from the depth of my heart to pray and make certain declarations over your life and I want you to receive it in this kingdom mysteries are transferred to words he blessed them saying not he blessed them wishing not he blessed them giving words words Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2 the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. The Spirit entered into me when He spake, not before He spake. 
at the point of speaking, the spirit entered me. The difference between a lecture and a spiritual communication is that there are transparencies of spirits. Hallelujah. Many of you have been in this city for a long time and the gates have not opened up. I don't mean to embarrass you, but you need to be angry. Or, or when you are comfortable with certain realms, you are short-circuiting the potential of the graces and the anointings that are here present and here in this ministry blessing you. There are possibilities you have seen God produce in the life of His servant that are not yet part of your life. No. If you stand to take a shower, and for a long time water is pouring only on your head and it does not touch your body and yet you are in the middle of the shower there must be witchcraft on that shower is that true? because if it touches your head the, even the feet is comfortable because it must reach it there how come there is such a shower a downpour even for those who are strangers and then for you who is part of the fold some things are not speaking he says we are all partakers of my grace but you see there is a law of spiritual reception you don't receive anyhow there is a protocol to reception the first law of reception is perception and discernment who is speaking over you he said he that receives a prophet in the name in the office your husband your wife can be that prophet and you can receive them in the name of a relative you will not receive a prophet's reward receiving in the name of a relative no whatever name blesses you comes with the rewards that that match the name are we together now yes he said blessed is he who comes in the name of our god he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward you must receive most times you see i hate to teach this but people have manipulated members with this and try to make themselves look like superhuman for nothing this is not what we're teaching but i submit to you you will never receive from people once your perception is this ordinary person that it does not work no it doesn't work it's against the law of transference there must be that spiritual potential difference and without all contradiction, the Bible says, the lesser. The lesser is not the weaker. The lesser is the one who is in need of that higher grace. When Jesus, even though he was the word, he had to submit to the ministry of John the Baptist to be ordained into ministry. If not, even as the word, his heavens were closed and that door did not open. It took his understanding the protocol of the anointing. Jesus as the word walked under a closed heaven for 30 years not even he's been the word open his heavens when his heavens opened in three and a half years he was done speed comes when doors open you're a businessman here please listen because a lot of business people believe men of god don't know what they are saying they just believe that all we do is preach you may not be right trust me Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. We are about to pray. Ezra 6, 14. Let's read together. One to read. And the elders of the Jews built it, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel. Now, God commanded it, but it did not happen automatically. The Bible says they prospered till they finished, not because of their architecture. While they were building, there were two mysterious prophets who were sending words. So if they ask you what are the raw materials it takes to build and finish, don't mention skill alone. Make sure you add prophecy. Prophecy has the power to insist that you finish. Some of you have started things that will never seem to finish. But God wants to grant you the finisher's anointing. Champions finish. They don't just start. They finish. It says, I have fought 
the good fight, I have finished the race. I have finished the race. I have finished the race. Can we pray? Let me start by declaring the grace for favor. Mysterious in its working can open the hearts of men and cause them to treat you favorably. The proof of favor is not money. No. The proof of favor is access to the hearts of men. Because when you have access to the hearts of men, you have access to their resources. You have access to the credibility and everything that they represent. I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus, standing upon the graces that are here present. And I speak over someone. I don't know where you are. You came to church this morning crying for the manifestation of the favor of God in your life. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, the one who gave gifts to men after he ascended from on high, I declare, let favor rest upon you. 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 In business, let it rest on you. In your home, let it rest on you. In ministry, let it rest on you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Favor. Now I want to declare over doors. The Bible says that some doors can be demonic. A great door and an effectual is open before me. It says, and many are the adversaries. There are doors that you don't need keys. Because they are not metallic objects. They are spirits that have decided to stand as an impedance to your life, your ministry, and your business for such doors. He says, if you shall say to this mountain, not be open, be lifted, and thrown into the sea. Get out of my way to be thrown into the sea. I want to declare over someone that every spirit that has been assigned, assigned over your life, assigned over your ministry, it says, I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered us. We declare in the name of Jesus, that spirit is banished from your life. That demonic influence is banished from your life. By the power of the Holy Ghost. And in the name of Jesus Christ. Doors. When he stood before the tomb of Lazarus, even though he had been dead for three days, he told the men, roll away the stone. So it is men that roll the stone. Jesus performs the resurrection, calling out from one realm to another. But rolling away the stone and losing the man is the responsibility of men. I want to call the men that will be used by God to roll away any stone. Stones of shame. Stones of reproach. There are men who must be called by God. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare every stone that must be rolled away for resurrection is coming out from the dead to life to happen in your life. I command that you enjoy their ministry now. You enjoy their ministry now. You enjoy their ministry now. And when he called forth Lazarus, the Bible says Lazarus came out but he was bound hand and feet. When a man comes out, resurrection has happened. He left the door of death to life, but he still cannot be effective because when your hands are bound, no productivity. When your legs are bound, no movement. Advancement and productivity are the ministry of the hands and the feet. That was why when they caught Samson, the first thing they bound, remember, 
was his hands. And when a miracle came, it affected his hands first. And then he took the jawbone of a donkey and killed 3,000 Philistines. For many of you, you may have come out. You are not dead, but your hands are bound. Your feet is bound. No advancement and no productivity. He said, lose him and let him go. That is the ministry of the prophetic. To lose so that you can go. I stand by the God who has sent me an in partnership with the graces here. I decree and declare everyone's productivity that has been bound by witchcraft, bound by all kinds of demonic things. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus be loose now. Your hands are loose to be productive. Your feet is loose to be productive. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lose him and let him go. Lose that business and let it go. I'm prophesying. Lose that home. Lose that husband. Lose that wife. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're about to take the communion strongly. Lose him and let him go. It's the ministry of the prophetic. Lose him. They covered Daniel inside the lion's den. When the king came, he asked the men, open him and bring him out. It takes men to help men come out of certain dungeons. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Not God, the king. There are kings that need to send for you to leave some doors and enter some doors. I speak over the north, the south, the east and the west of this nation and this city. In the name of Jesus, everyone who represents a captain of industry, everyone who sits upon any position of influence that must send for you, I command enjoy their ministry right now. In Nehemiah chapter 2, when you read from verse 1 to 8, we are not reading, but just for reference. The Bible talks about a man called Nehemiah who was the cup bearer of the king. And without asking any question, the king saw his countenance. Because the favor of God was upon him. He said, Nehemiah, you are not sick, but why does your heart look troubled? And he says, oh king, it is because the Jerusalem wall has not been built. I am here serving, but my people are suffering. And he said, make your request. And he made a request that you will be given a time off and that letters be written to all the governors. And the king satisfied his heart desire and gave him timber and everything that he needed to build. And he went to build. And there were two mysterious men who came as doors to close his, his, what he was doing called Sambalat and Tobias. The Bible says when these men heard of the favor that he secured with the king, they were aggrieved. But he used a strategy to build. And this is the strategy all believers must use to build. With one hand, he built. But with another hand, he held the sword. You don't build with two hands. With one hand, you are doing the business. But with another hand, you secure your spiritual connection. This is how we build walls. Hallelujah. Now please listen. We are about to take the communion. Do you know why the communion does not work for many people? Because for many people, they are taking wafers and a drink. Unfortunately, the power in this communion is not just in the materials we are taking, but the revelation that supports what we are doing. Hallelujah. The Bible speaking about Jesus said that same night, that when he came with the disciples, there are two sacraments that were left with the church, theologically speaking. The sacrament of the baptisms and the sacrament of communion and all of them have the mysteries that they play in the life of the believer hallelujah while if, if the communion will go around you can we can go ahead sir okay so we we'll distribute it now and then we're going to pray listen paul was speaking to the church in corinth and paul made reference even though he was not there by revelation it was given to him how that that same night the bible says jesus took bread and he broke it and said take it this is my body he didn't say this is like my body he says take it 
this is my body in theology we call it the doctrine of interpenetration this is the mystery by which two entities become one that is the same thing that happens even in marriage that two people who are separate become one recognized in the spirit are we together and then he took of the blood and he says this is my blood of the new testament and he says do this as often as you will in remembrance so if you do it as often as you don't remember the remembrance bring to memory what is the significance of the communion now theologically speaking according to ephesians 1 2 3 the implication of our being in christ there are three prophetic implications number one is our oneness please do not forget this what does it mean to be one with christ we have become partakers of his life. Are we together? Yes. In ancient times, they adumbrated this in a mystery called the salt covenant. Where two people who wanted to come into covenant, everybody will bring their portions of salt and they will mix it together. The condition for that relationship to be broken is everybody must handpick their portion of salt out. That is the kind of relationship that we have. So regardless your foundation regardless whatever you are connected because the life of the flesh is in the blood and sin comes through the blood is that true and every curses and everything comes through the blood but right now he that is joined to christ the bible declares is one spirit so the first revelation of the communion is that you are reenacting in remembrance and by this mystery your oneness with christ ephesians 6 10 amplified says it says finally brethren be strong in the lord the amplified rendition says draw your strength from your unity with him your oneness with him there is an implication to your being one with christ number two is your positional advantage the bible lets us know that he that cometh from above is above all and paul was mentoring the church in ephesus he says we've been exalted with christ and we've been made to sit far above thrones dominions is that true and every name that is named not only in this world but even in that which is to come number three he said i am the vine and ye are the branches is that true and because you are connected to me he said every branch that does not bear fruit my father will prune so that it will bear fruit that means fruitfulness and productivity results john chapter 15 and verse 8 he says, herein is our Father glorified that he bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Verse 16 says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Lasting fruit as a result of your oneness. So we are taking this communion, reenacting the mystery of the bread of jesus and the body listen he said i am the bread that came from heaven your fathers ate the manners and there were no more but that he called himself the living bread and then because the life of the flesh is in the blood if we partake of his blood and then we have his life in truth he that does not eat of my flesh and does not take of my blood he said is not part of me as we take this i want you to expect every sickness in your body that is not of Christ everything that Jesus paid for you have a right to claim it even through the mystery of the communion is that true and then the revelation of your exalted position I'm exalted above and beyond the situations that make me cry above seated with Christ not standing waiting to be seated we are seated already hallelujah so father we thank you for this mystery here at Roderick we thank you for the honor of partaking in your body and the bread and we declare by the power of the holy spirit that as we take of the bread in jesus name we declare that the mystery of your body we are members of this body and the bible says for not deciding the body some are weak some are sick and some do sleep we have discerned your body therefore lord we declare that weakness sickness and untimely death is far from our life in the name of jesus we can now take the bread and then please do take the cup and after that may i request that you take a minute and just begin to pray and declare everything that the word of god says concerning you
Someone pray for one minute. Begin to declare. I discern the Lord's body in the name of Jesus by the mystery of the bread and the mystery of the cup. Satan, you have no power over me. Someone is praying. One minute, please, very quickly. Called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. Disconnected from the limitations of ancestry by the blood. Disconnected from yokes. All the limitations that come through the limitations of bloodline. Out of my life. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Exalted with Christ. Seated with Christ. Reigning with Christ. Declaring like Christ. Excelling like Christ. For as He is, so are we even now here in this life. Are you praying? No untimely death. 2023. Hear my voice. Someone is declaring. In the name of Jesus, because He lives, I live. I reject untimely death. I reject sickness. My organs function perfectly from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. In the name of Jesus Christ. Close doors open. Greater doors open. Access to favor. Access to wisdom. The life of God is at work in me. By the power of the Holy Ghost. No enchantment. No divination. Drives over my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we're wrapping up. Thank you for your patience. Listen to me. We just took the communion. What I believe in the power of life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. It says, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. It says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath set me free from the law of sin and death. There are people who came to church today and two categories in one I'd like to make that call. You're here and you're saying, Apostle, I came for this conference and whilst hearing you speak, the Holy Ghost began to convict me as touching my relationship with Jesus Christ. This is a kingdom that functions on relationship. Relationship is the basis for everything in this kingdom. And you are saying, I want to make my ways right. Probably you were invited. And there are those who are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but as it is right now, my life has gone haywire. I need a restoration. I need to rededicate my life. I'm going to make an altar call. There has to be someone here who wants to make it right with Jesus. And I don't want you to sit down waiting for someone to be the first to come. You need to make this decision. As I make this call, I want you to quickly come and stand right in front of me. I lead you to pray and then we're done. I begin my counting now. I'll count one to five wherever you are. You are saying, Apostle, I truly want to make it right with Jesus. Now, you can sit back and pretend like everything is alright. Or you can respond to the nudging of the Spirit and say, this is the moment. Now begin to come. Begin to come. There's someone here who needs to make it right with Jesus, whether you are at the back. And then for those falling online, by the way, you are falling online and you are saying, I need to make this right with Jesus. This is an opportunity I'm going to lead you to pray. Are there any persons? Please make your way gallantly right now to the front because I want to pray with you. This life that I have is the life of God in me. This life that I have come is the life of this life that I have. This the life of Christ in me. This life that I have. Are you still coming? Is there someone still coming? Come and join him very quickly. So wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, 
Thank you so much for making this declaration. Jesus said, As many who will come to him, you will in no wise cast away. Hallelujah. If there are any persons coming, please make it very quickly, very quickly, so that we'll now pray. I salute all of you. Look at our lovely children, even coming to make this decision for Jesus. I think we should give them a big God bless you. Hallelujah. The Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his then only begotten Son, now his first begotten of we the brethren. It says that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. The word there is not everlasting life. Everybody has everlasting life. Are we together? The life we have been given is a superior life. God's own life. Not just the kind of life his own life hallelujah this is what we have been given so i salute all of you my brothers and my sisters for making this decision may i please request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender and for those who are connecting from across the world following online here is an opportunity to make jesus lord of your life say this after me let it be from the depth of your heart say lord jesus i have heard your word i love you with all my heart I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord my Savior and my King I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I am a child of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. The Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. I thank you for honoring their declarations of faith. And by the authority of Scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God in the name of Jesus. I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God that you be grounded and established in righteousness. And I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. We call you the righteousness of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for staying to the end of this message. But before you leave, I want to tell you a story. There was a father who has two sons. And so he sent two of his sons to the farm, like to go and harvest yam. So he called them both and sent them. The elderly one says he is going to go, that he is going to like go on the errands. But the younger one says he's not going to go and so they left the presence of the man and behold the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went but the one who says he was not going to go at a point he thought within himself and said my father has been very responsible for me so i will go so he changed his mind and went so I want to ask, among these two sons, who actually does the will of the father? It is the younger one. 
So as you have listened to this message, it's not about listening alone. If you're listening and probably you feel stirred up, but later on, the zeal, the passion that you had when you were listening to this message dies and you do not apply this message, it means the time that you dedicated listening to, them, to this message was a waste. So it is not about what you share alone. It's not about the messages that you listen to alone. It is more of what you take out of th those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um, better. So I do hope and I pray that this message will transform your life, will turn your life around.